Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Call Me Crafty Owl here on the Scrapping for Less YouTube channel with a sneak peek at the September 2020 Scrapping for Less Flavor of the Month kit. Today I'm going to share with you just a little peek at one of the collections and create a quick and simple paper piece card. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the Scrapping for Less channel, I hope that you'll click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. Next weekend, we will be doing the monthly hop where we debut the newest flavor of the month card kit. But starting with me today and over the next week, you're going to see lots of inspiration and sneak peeks here using the kit. Let me just tell you that I have fallen in love with this kit. For my card today, I'm going to be using one of the new stamp sets from the kit along with some of the pattern papers and embellishments. Let's get crafty! I'm going to start today by doing all of the stamping. I will be using just a clear block for my gnome stamp and I will be using stays on black ink. Now the reason that I'm using stays on is the pattern paper has a little bit more of a slicker texture so I wanted to make sure that this dried nicely on it. I do need a white base copy of the stamp so I did that first and then I moved on to the pattern paper pieces. I inked up each piece that I would need and I stamped it onto the coordinating pattern paper that I wanted to go with that. The first part that I'm going to stamp is the hat onto the striped pattern paper and I will actually be using the back of this for the red apple. So once I have my hat stamped, which you'll see there how nicely that stays on looks on the pattern paper, I ink up just around that apple portion, flip my pattern paper over, and make sure I stamp that high enough so when I cut it out, it won't affect the hat on the back. The green polka dotted paper I want to use for the little patch on the hat and the band around the brim. Once all of those pieces were ready, I cut everything out off camera. Also off camera, I colored in the gnome's nose and just a little bit of gray shading on his beard using my Arteza watercolor pencils and a water brush. To adhere my pieces together today, I'm using Art Glitter Glue. I like this for the fine tip and I am just going to add adhesive to the back of each piece and layer it up until my gnome is all ready to go. Once each of those pieces is on there, I did set the stamp block on it and let it dry for about five minutes before I moved on. Paper piecing is one of those techniques that I often forget about, but when I do do it, I just love it. Let me know below when was the last time you paper pieced an image. Once my gnome was all dry, I got out a piece of white cardstock that I would be setting him on and stamping my sentiment onto. I wanted to make sure that there was enough room for the sentiment, so I placed the gnome there temporarily before picking up the sentiment stamp with the door of the Misty and using VersaFine Onyx Black to stamp that onto the white cardstock. Now that is quite a bit of white, so I wanted to add some texture to it. I'm going to do that with this apple embossing folder. I thought it went well with the apple on the gnome's hat. Now that all of the parts of the card are ready, it's time to start putting it together. I adhered my emboss piece to the center of a red cardstock mat, and then those two layers got adhered to the front of the card base. Everything so far is just flat down, no dimension yet. But that doesn't last for long. To adhere my gnome to the card front, I brought in some foam dots and added those to the back before placing him on the card front above the sentiment. Now you know I need to finish this card off with a little bling or something, so I brought in the tan enamel dots from the card kit and added three of those on the card front. You'll notice that I did end up adjusting the one on the top right. I thought after I had placed my third I needed to move that just a little bit. 
And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's card and getting a sneak peek at the upcoming kit. If you did, as always, we appreciate a thumbs up. Until the next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye.